We're going to start by making a slip knot at our anchor peg. Then we're going to use the casting method of an E-wrap cast on. So we'll want to make little E's on each peg all the way around the loom. This is one of my favorite cast on methods and it's very simple. Anyone can do it. Um, just keep wrapping until you make it back to that anchor peg. And then you'll want to start and go above the loops that you already made. I'm grabbing my yarn tool because I'm going to need that next. So we're going to wrap above the other loop as such. So there's going to be two loops on our loom. And again, you're just going to continue wrapping all the way around until you make it back to the anchor peg. After we're done doing the second part of our E-wrap cast on, we meet up at the anchor peg. Then we're going to grab our yarn tool and take the bottom loop over the top. Again, look closely, we're taking the bottom, the bottom loop over the top, the bottom over the top. We're going to do this the whole entire way around the loom. Again, it's the bottom over the top. And this will complete our E-wrap cast on method once we meet back at the anchor peg. Then we will be cast, we will officially be casted on to our loom. And we can proceed to the next step. The next part we're going to work on is the cuff of the mittens. So we'll be making six rows of knit one, purl one. Right now I'm doing a purl. It's called a purl stitch. And this is a flat knit where I'm just laying it over the top of the peg and taking the bottom over the top. This is the purl stitch where I'm putting the working yarn below the loop. Sometimes it can be a little tricky depending on how tight it is. And I take the loop through off the peg and reattach it. So again, this is the flat knit. And this is the purl. And I'm taking the working yarn up through, taking it off the peg and reattaching the loop and pulling it snug, but not too snug. Again, this is our flat knit stitch. And our purl stitch. And we'll want to do this for six rows. A row is considered from the start of the anchor peg going all the way around, meeting back to the anchor peg. So once you do one all the way around, that's considered one row. I suggest using a counter or writing it down to keep track of your stitches. Otherwise, your project won't turn out right. I use a, a uh, stitch counter. It's easier and I, I, I also write it down when I can't find my stitch counter. Again, we're going to continue doing the knit one purl one for six rows. So again, six rows of knit one purl one. 
and we are creating the cuff by doing this, the cuff of the mitten. Now we're forming the heel of the hand, and you can do it one of two different ways. You can do the E-wrap method, which is very simple, or I've listed directions below, and this is what I'm starting to do in the video. I'm knitting 12, and then I'm E-wrapping 12. So after you make the cuff of the hand, you'll start the heel of the hand, so you can follow my directions below or you can continue doing the e-wrap method until you get to the thumb in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below and I would love to help you. The next portion we're going to be working on is the thumb portion. And what we're going to do is count from the anchor peg, count over seven pegs. And again, this will measure our thumb. So what we're going to do is do an E-wrap. Start at the first peg. And then continue wrapping until you get to the seventh peg. When you get to the seventh peg, you'll want to e wrap that over from the bottom, the bottom loop over the top, bottom over the top. Once you're done with that, go ahead and push the yarn down, and we're going to wrap the other way. Secure your yarn, and again, we're going to take the bottom loop over the top. Bottom over the top. Bottom over the top. And this is going to slowly form our thumb. Again, push down. And then you'll want to wrap the other way. This took me about 15 rounds, or I'm sorry, 15 rows for the thumb. Going up and doing the E-wrap, it took me about 15 rows. And you'll see it once you continue 
you see the thumb forming with the yarn. So just continue doing that until you get the size of thumb that you want. Now that we're done with the thumb, we're going to leave it and continue e-wrapping all the way around our loom from the start of the anchor peg to the end all the way around. We're going to do 13 rows, which is what my daughter's hand is measured at. From the wrist to the tip of her fingers, it was approximately six and a half inches. Depending on who you're making this for, you may need to go bigger. If you're doing this for an adult, you're going to need to go bigger. Um, just a little bit. Um, just like I said, depending on how big the person's hand is that you're making the mittens for, you can adjust it to size. So continue e-wrapping and knitting over for 13 rows. The next part we're going to do is binding off. I don't do it any special way. I just take the yarn, wrap it around the loom one, about one and a half times and thread my tapestry needle. I work my way around as though I'm binding off a hat. And what I do is I just insert my yarn or my needle into the loop on the peg and pull up through the loop and then pull that loop off the peg and pull my yarn and then I go to the next one. It's very, very simple. Just go all the way around on each loop and pull up on the, on the loop with your needle. I've now pulled my mitten off my loom and I, I binded it off and now I'm going to sew up the hole where the hands where the hand is to close that hole up and uh, I just work my needle and my thread in real not really deep but just on the edge and I pull it tight and I go all the way around closing the hole.
Now I'm going to take my tapestry needle and sew up the sides of the, of the thumb. And I'm just going to do the best that I can, starting with the bottom stitch and slipping it through the end stitches on both sides. And just work my way up. Work all in the same pattern. If you decide to go from left to right or right to left, so it all looks the same because you don't want it look you don't want it to look different. With this yarn, you really can't tell anyway because it's so colorful. But just work neatly. Plus, you don't want to stitch and make your thumb smaller. So you make, want to make sure you do it right here on the outside of the thumb stitches to get it just right. And just continue to do that all the way up so your thumb is sewn up. And this is how our finished product looks. This is our mitten and how it looks from the front to the back. Thanks for watching everyone. That's going to do it for this video on how to make a loom knit mitten. If you have any questions, leave me a comment in the box below. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Have a great day.